Dr. Hassan is here with another lecture of Physics 120. Uh, today's lecture is about statics. Statics meaning that objects are not moving. Statics means stationary. And then when an object is not moving, they are constrained with forces and torque. So there are two things that today we're going to talk about. Um, talking about force, force is an could be a load, could be weight, anything that we could pull or push something that's called a force. Uh, we already know from second law of Newton, force can actually create acceleration, but in the static, the sum of forces becomes zero. That's why we don't have any motion. Uh, the second topic that I want to talk about today would be about torque. So torque is when we have force and then we multiply force by a distance. So torque is a quantity that talks about rotation. So for instance, uh, if you want to rotate this bottle, you apply a force like this on my finger and then you twist it. So this creates rotation that's called a torque. So we also call torque moment. Then I want to talk about simple machines, simple machines like pulleys, and then we talk about uh, levers, so another simple machine. So let's just start talking about force. Uh, now, the resultant force is called addition of forces. So to clarify the meaning of resultant force, assuming that we are applying different forces on the same object and we want to see how much the outcome of these forces would be. And that's, that's called resultant force. Now, if we have an object here, look like... Uh, I hook and then I apply different forces to this. So I apply a force like this, apply another force like this. Now this force apply is 20 Newton, the other force is 10 Newton. Now by looking at this object, you can actually understand the summation of these two forces would be 10 Newtons. Because this force is in the positive x, so you can say sum of the forces on the x is equal to, the force is 20 is in the positive x, and then the force 10 is on the negative x then your resultant force simply will be 10 newton you don't have any other forces in this case now if two forces are opposite of each other we simply subtract them from each other let's look at different scenario in this scenario i have a force the same force i have 20 10 then i have another force down here which is in the direction of 20 um, This force is another 5. Now, if you want to find a summation of these three forces, you can simply say, because I added a 5 here, in this equation, I need to add the 5 to the summation of force. So it will be 20 minus 10 plus a 5. And then the addition will be, it's going to go 5 over that. That's going to be 15 Newton. Now consider a, a scenario where the two forces are not on the same direction. Look like the example that we have here. In this example, I want to find what's going to be the summation of force. Now, these two forces, again, F1 is on the Y and F2 is something between X and Y. There was a method called component method that we talk about that in mathematics when we were talking about vectors. So I'm going to use that method. So in order to find resultant force for two forces, we use a method that's called resultant force. So I have 800 Newton that's going to go up. Then out of this 800 Newton F1, how much of it is on the X and how much of it is on the Y? F1 X, F1 Y. So on F1, everything on F1 is on the positive Y. So you can say that F1 Y is equal to 800 Newton. F1 X is zero. Now going to F2, for F2, you can actually break down the F2 to X and Y components. So you look at the triangle like this. Then 
this is the force F2 which is 600 now I have here again this component which is here this one is in F2x and down here is going to go down is F2y which is going to be here the same thing now F2y is opposite to 30 degree and F2x is adjacent to 30 degree uh, if you remember from mathematics adjacent used to be called cosine right so you can say cosine 30 is equal to f2x over 600 and then sine 30 is equal to f2y over 600 now if you cross multiply this you're going to get f2x is equal to 600 cosine 30 and then f2y is equal to 600 sine 30 now by looking into this you would understand that f2y is actually moving is, is toward down so is is uh, looking down so which is actually coming down here right is downward so I'm gonna say f2y negative so 600 cosine 30 degrees if you use your calculator you're gonna get something like 520 and then for 600 sine 30 you will get minus 300 now I can go to the next step so if you remember the component method the first step is to find the component the second step is that to find so this is step one that we did step two is sum of the f on the x so you can say sum of f of x is equal to f1x plus f2x and then we can simply find sum of f of y as well is equal to uh, f1y plus f2y okay f1x is 520 and then sorry f2x is 120 f1x was 0 so it would be 0 plus 520 the answer is simply 520 newton on the y we have a force of 800 which is for the first force minus 300 the resultant is 500 newton now i have the sum on the x and i have the sum on the y now out of these two i can actually find how much the resultant of these two would be now let's just pay attention to here so sum of f of x I'm going to call this one FRX, which is resultant force on the X. This is 500. This is 520. On the Y, we have sum of F of Y. I'm going to call this one FRY is equal to 500. I want to find the resultant of these two. To find the resultant of 2, 2, force, you can say F of R is equal to, this is resultant force. Is equal to F R X, the component. This is nothing specific. This is petigram that you already know it. You already know this side, you already know this side. Then you can find the resultant of these two forces. Now, resultant of these two forces will be equal to root square of 500 to the power of 2 plus 520 to the power of 2. I'm going to grab my calculator and then find the resultant of these two. Now, once you find the resultant of these two, you need to find the angle. So, 500 to the power of 2 plus 520 to the power of 2. The answer, I guess, is 721 so 721 the length of this guy is 721 newton and then the theta which is going to be the angle here angle with the x-axis all the time in order to find theta you can say theta is equal to tangent inverse of f r y over f r x now will be tangent inverse of 520 divided by 500 so I got for this 
the tan inverse of this is um, yeah my calculator is in radian make sure that your calculator is in degree when you do this calculation I'm gonna get 46 degrees 46.1 degrees now let's go back to the picture in this picture 800 is gonna go up this way 600 is going this way it's kind of obvious to us that it's kind of very much obvious to us that when these two are going in these two direction the resultant of them would be in the third quarter so there is no doubt about it we, we, we don't have any doubt about that now uh, we already we, we, we found this too I'm gonna just give you a summary of what we discussed so in order to find resultant of these two force resultant of forces in 2d I mean in two-dimensional the first thing that you do is step one break forces in X and Y components that's called FX and FY for every forces that you have you have three forces five forces whatever number of forces that you have step two is that to find FRX and FRY FRX is summation of F of X FRY is summation of F of Y in step 3, you can find F of R, resultant force, which is equal to FRx to the power of 2 plus FRy to the power of 2. And theta is equal to tan inverse of FRy over FRx. Now I want to just give you another simple example. In this simple example, I assume that I have two forces. And these two forces, one force is going to go like this with the angle of 45 degrees here. And the other force is moving down here with the angle of 30 degrees. F1 is equal to 50 Newton. F2 is equal to 40 Newton. I want to see how much the resultant of these two forces is. So let me just to change the color of my pen. Now, step one, step one is to find F1x, F1y, F2x, and F2y. Just look at this triangle for the first force. For F1, you have F1x down here, and F1y up here. Now for F1x, the component of F1x is adjacent, right? When it's adjacent, we can say F1 cosine 45 degrees. F1y is opposite, so it will be F1 sine 45. Now I'm going to just put them in the calculator. That's easy. So F1, which is 50 cosine 45. 50 cosine... 45 I'm gonna get 35.35 and then 50 sine 45 you get the same answer 35.35 let's move on to force f2 for force f2 is the same as f1 you can see the one on the y is opposite so f2y and f2x up there so f2x is 40 or f2 you can, uh, can actually follow the same thing that i have there f2 cosine 30 and this one is f2 sine 30 so i have 40 cosine 30 and then 40 sine 30 so 40 Okay, I get 34.64 for here, sorry, for the top one, 34.64, and for this one, I'm going to get 20. Remember, the F Y component is, is pointing down, so everywhere will be negative for F2Y. 
Now I'm done with step one. Step two was to find FRX and FRY. So FRX is summation on the X. So on the X will be F1X plus F2X. This will be F1Y plus F2Y. Okay, on the X I have 35.35. .35 plus 34.64 okay, the first one I got 70 for the next one F1Y which is 35.35 .35 minus 20 so if you subtract 20 from this you can get 15.35 Newton then I can find this is step 2 done step 3 is to find fr total resultant force which is root square of frx to the power of 2 plus fry to the power of 2 which would be root square of now this would be equal to root square of 70 to the power of 2 plus 15.35 to the power of 2 the answer is 71.66 newton that's your resultant force and the angle of resultant force theta is the angle with x axis and that's equal to tangent inverse of fry over frx which is equal to tangent inverse of 15.35 divided by sorry divided by 70 1.66 uh, divided by 70 I already have it so fry divided by frx divided by 7 so tangent inverse of The answer is 12.37. So in other words, this, the, the resultant of those two forces would be something look like this. The angle here 12.37 and F of R is equal to 17.66 Newton. Okay, I'll be back with you in a second with a different video for torque. Thank you for listening.